Friends, what is up? Let's talk about Global Star. All right, friends, so first off, who survived the bloodbath again in the market this week? I really, you know, once we hit Friday, I really started assessing things, what was coming, what was left, and, you know, at this point, I'm just hoping Jerome Powell doesn't talk anymore this coming week. I'm looking at all of my stocks right now. I'm looking at my whole portfolio and wondering, you know, what is the right thing to do right now? Is the market going to continue to go down? Can it possibly go down anymore? We're literally seeing numbers. You know, right now, it's almost worse than it was first pandemic hit for some things. I want to talk about Global Star particularly. In this video, things that I want to go over with Global Star are the new financial report that just came out. Let's look at the chart. Let's look at what people are saying. And let's look at the survival rate of the stock right now with the stock market crash. Will it make it through the stock market crash? Or is it just going to continue to be beaten up and beaten up and, you know, we're just going to wake up one day and this thing's going to be, you know, there's not much left. So guys, happy Saturday. I am up drinking coffee. The birds are chirping. My portfolio is destroyed. But I'm feeling good. Okay, friends, so let's go right to the chart with Global Star. So February 10th is when we had our big pickup with Global Star hitting around 240. And then it stayed pretty far up until February 17th. And then we started to have the big drop come in here to February 19th and then February 23rd. That is the start of the fall right there. You know, this all started on a Tuesday, the day before President's Day three weeks ago. And like I've said, I think a lot of us were just thinking, you know, this is just a, you know, kind of a little small reset. You know, this may last a week or two, but we're into the third week and we're getting ready to go into a fourth week. And we're, we're wondering, are we going to go through this again? And you know, we're, we're already at record lows, I think a lot of us for stocks that we have. I know a lot of us are going, well, should I just sell out of this and just kind of restart and just pick it up when it, you know the market tries to come back here? But the evidence that we have right now with Global Star on a chart, the lowest that Global Star has hit right now with this whole mess the past three weeks, on March 5th, it hit $1.15. Then it rebound from that and now it's back up to, we'll say $1.40. Now, honestly, Global Star sitting at $1.40, that I, I personally, I I think that's great. The fact that we have not went under a dollar in Global Star is very impressive to me, honestly, in that the market cap has stayed at 2.81 billion. But guys, there's still a lot of people in Global Star right now. The volume on Global Star is still very high. At a 39.74 million volume, that's still really good for a lot of stocks that are just trading around $1.50, $1.30 like Global Star at this moment. And then going right here to the short interest, the 52.06 million, the short interest buys right now, that's a lot too. That's very high right now. But Global Star sitting at $1.40 bid price. That is the buy price, the bid price on Global Star, what you are buying into right now at this particular moment. Okay, so going into this week, March 8th, Monday morning, the stock market will open. At this moment, the stimulus bill has not passed completely in the Senate. They have reversed things and they have altered things, so it's going to have to go back to the House, be rewritten, the parts that were needing to be changed. Then it's going to go back to the Senate, be voted on, and be passed. Now, this week, we could see the stimulus be passed by Friday. So that right there would bring some life into the stock market. And then when the stimulus bill finally gets passed, states, people, individuals, companies, etc., have money in hand, we should start to see some stuff come back here, hopefully. But guys, instead of looking at this right now as just a market crash, look at this, at least I'm having to, look at this as just a big, big reset in the market right now. We've had so many growth stocks here this past, you know, just four months. And there was a lot of things saying like, I don't think it can support this. I don't think it can support this. I was even saying this about Global Star. Like when Global Star would hit like a 280 range, I was like, guys, you know, be careful. I wouldn't buy that at that range right now. And I was like, $2 is a good range to buy Global Star in because a lot of big analysts were saying, you know, that there is something coming. There's a market reset coming. And then it just came out of nowhere and now it's affecting everything. But if you're in Global Star at $2 or $2 more, I, you know, I, I really wouldn't worry. If things can get reset here, if the market can get some life back into it and things start turning here again, you know, we'll, we'll be back to normal here by a month or so, guys. But friends, no, if the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, you know, the whole stock market keeps falling in the United States, that's an issue. And they're not going to let it fall too much more, I, I would think. They're going to start to pump money in the stock market here. So going into the next part of what is happening with Global Star. So if you type up Global Star, right now and you go in to look for articles about Global Star, most likely you're just going to find a lot of negative articles when it comes to these analysts 
analysts talking about Global Star. They all are saying the same thing that Global Star is way overpriced right now and that's going to go back to a 55 cent range. Now they have been saying this literally they have just been repeating these articles after article. And they have all been saying the same thing, you know, it's hit this too much of a high, the market cap is way too high, it's overvalued. And there is truth to that, you know, I even agree to that to extent. But what I'm betting on with Global Star is that all the new contracts, the new brand deals, the new products they have been releasing just in the past six months, if you've been following me in my videos about Global Star, then you know about all the new deals they have, you know, the new products, the new brand deals, you know, everything I just said. They are moving along. They are striving to be a bigger company, a bigger financial company, and eventually be a debt-free company. Now that's going to take some time, but they are moving along in that path. So the fourth quarter lease came out for Global Star ending in December 31st, 2020. And of course, we pretty much all knew they were going to be terrible. There's no way they could be good because, you know, it's 2020. Everybody had bad quarter lease except, you know, Amazon and Walmart. But let's read this. Our revenue is categorized as service revenue and equipment revenue. We provide service to customers using technology from our satellite and ground network. Equipment revenue is generated from the sales of devices that work over our network. During the 12 months ended December 31st, 2020, total revenue decreased 3.2 million to 128.5 million from 131.7 million in 2019. This variance was due primarily to an out of period adjustment, which increased duplex service revenue by 3.9 million during 2019, related to the change in the calculation of the estimated impact from the ASC 606. So like I said, I've been talking about this, you know, we, we didn't expect Global Star to have a good 2020. There was just really no way for that to happen, honestly. They didn't miss it by much, but still, you know, they missed it. But what we're counting on right now is that with all these new contracts, new products, new brand deals, that Global Star by the end of this year into next year, 2022, we'll start to see a bigger revenue come in, which will in turn build a bigger market cap, which will in turn will build a bigger stock bidding price on it, and which will attract new investors in it to stay longer. So guys, step one with Global Star at this particular time, what we're wanting, we're wanting Global Star to survive the stock market reset, crash, however you want to call it, and hoping that people see what the company is and what the company could be if they were to stay in it for the long run. So the scary part with Global Star right now is, is that it's losing a lot of investors right now. A lot of people are running from the stop because they're getting scared. And that's understandable. I completely understand right now. But like I said, if you are reading articles right now on Global Star and you're wanting to find good news on it, you're not gonna find good news because right now the Wall Street guys, they are betting on Global Star to fall apart. They're not wishing this to do well. You have to realize that when you see these articles, a lot of times you can almost see that they're wanting it to fall, so they're saying it can fall, and they're telling people mentally that it's going to fall because they are betting against the stock, which in turn will make them loads of money. And friends, just to let you know what I'm doing, I am holding. I am not selling my Global Star position. I'm going to ride this out. Even if I go down with the ship, I am staying on board, and I'm going to ride this one out just to let you know where I'm at. Friends, these are my thoughts. This is what I think. Leave me a comment. Play nice in the comments. If you can, like it. And please like and subscribe. And remember, I talk about Global Star a lot. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your time. And guys, remember, be positive, be you, and God bless you. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye, friends.